Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be looking at 10 plays that make Nisha the GOAT. Specifically, we're going to be following his invoker and I've written down 10 plays and we're going to be looking at 10 plays that really show why this guy is so good because it's not all about flashy wombo combos. It's more about the niche decision making that really makes Nisha such a consistent dominant player and let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like actually you want to become much, much better at Dota and you want to take it more seriously. The Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank and I'll see you there. So we're going to be looking at an Exhort Invoker here that's rushing Midas. Now I would like to give a little bit of context really quick so you can understand the play I'm about to show you. He currently is rushing a Midas and doesn't have boots, which means he's very susceptible to being ganked. Also, Exhort Invoker isn't good at defending himself like Wex Invoker is. So Exhort Invoker has to play defensive in the early game, and this is very important to note. So important to note that we're going to be watching this clip here at 7 minutes. Nisha's pushing in the mid lane and sees quite a bit of action going on in the side lanes. He sees the Naga, the Rubik, the Bagnus. He has quite a bit of information. This doesn't mean he's going to rotate because that's not what Exhort Invoker does. Exhort Invoker likes to push the mid tower. However, he doesn't actually hit the tower more than twice. You can see he's a very afraid of walking up. He still wants to put pressure on the mid tower and chips it down about a tenth of his health, but doesn't go for it. I know this seems like a small deal, but this is why players like Nisha will consistently have good games even at the highest level. They understand when their hero is weak and they don't overforce the issue. The next clip is going to be relatively similar to the last clip, but I still thought it was actually very important. He's now level 10 and so he's getting much stronger, but still has the same issue as before. He's pretty squishy and definitely can get ganked and set upon. So you'll see when the Magnus TP's in here, him and Liquid all retreat. They leave the tower at about a fourth health and go back to farming. And once again, this is something that the average player just cannot do. The average player, when they see a low HP tower or when they commit to a play, are fully committed. If this is you, you will never, I'm just being blunt, you'll never get to the level of Nisha because frankly, he understands that putting pressure, baiting TPs, is honestly just as good in most scenarios as actually finishing the tower and getting the kills because realistically committing to the kills will also get you and your teammates killed. So the next clip we're going to be looking at here is when he gets his boots to travel. We're 13 minutes in now and he's looking at the mid lane. He sees the Legion commander bottom and also I would like to note that gaming gladiators lineup is meant to scale. Their draft in particular isn't like extremely good early on. Magnus takes a little bit of time to come online. Leshrac wants to farm Bloodstone, which he doesn't have yet. And the Naga Siren is Naga Siren. She does pretty little in the early game. So Nisha understands this. He understands that they're going to be farming. So anyone who pushes up really far likely is alone. And this is something you have to be able to do in your pubs just by looking at the enemy heroes. What are they likely going to do? Should I run at the hero that is showing or should I assume that they're baiting, right? And so you'll see here while he's pushing in the mid lane, he sees the Magnus push up really far. They get a nice overgrowth and he TPs in with a little hesitation using Cold Snap and Alacrity to finish off a pretty tanky Magnus. From there, 14 minutes in, I just want to talk about quickly his basic game plan. Yes, I can keep talking about all the cool little plays he makes, but honestly, the main gist of Exhort Midas Invoker is to push out the mid lane, defend your mid tower and farm the nearby camps. And that's what he's going to do. But basically, don't underestimate how important the mid lane tower is. It's the most important tower in the game for maintaining map control, preventing smoke ganks, and just in general being able to play fast with your team. This upcoming play here is probably my favorite out of all of them. Except, may okay, maybe point 0.9 is actually a little bit better. But he's going to, at minute 16, identifies the rune spawning, right? He doesn't want to let Lesh get an arcane rune, a regen rune, haste, none of these runes, right? So he sends Forge Spirit to the bottom rune and then identifies once again that they're splitting up and he's gonna boots a travel to the bottom lane, killing off this Legion Commander. I just thought it was a really cheeky play. I mean, look how heads up he is. So he's gonna kill, okay, he's not perfect, right? This guy's not a literal god. He's very good, but he's not a literal god. But eventually, while killing the Legion Commander, while killing Legion, has the focus to deny the bot rune, which was a DD, so it kind of didn't matter, but you get the point. His focus is incredible. His awareness of the entire game state, all at the same time, 
is unbelievable. The next play is a 17 minute bottom siege. It's not really anything too complex, but a lot of players overcomplicate Dota and they try to keep killing when they have map control. Right now, the Naga Siren and the Leshrac both are farming. Yeah, it's true. However, Liquid has a Broodmother and Exhort Invoker is very good at pushing towers as well. So they got a couple kills bottom and they're gonna push into this tower. And honestly, this is something I'd like to go over quickly as a bigger picture thing. Anytime you have a Lycan, Beastmaster, Enigma, Visage, Broodmother, any of these unit heroes on your team, look for kills in the enemy's jungle, right? Very straightforward. Look for kills in this area. When you look for kills in this area, you can transition it into a tier two tower. That is going to turn into an outpost and the game becomes way better from an XP perspective and just from an overall map control perspective. Think about that in your pubs if you have these heroes. Now is what I would argue is maybe the most important trait for becoming a top player. And that is being able to identify holes in the enemy's positioning in the mid to late game. Honestly, in the early game, it's not as hard. People are typically more so split up and are showing. In the mid to late game, it's usually only small gaps that give away information that allow you to jump. In this case, at 23 minutes in, he sees Quinn's Lesh rack in the bot lane. This is enough of a gap for Liquid to ping out this Magnus. You can see instantly, Nisha is pinging the Magnus. He sees the gap. He's telling his team, Lashrak is showing bottom, there is a Magnus mid lane, and this Magnus is not good defensively. He doesn't even have Greaves, so he can't get out of Cold Snap, and he can't get out of Overgrowth. He's very susceptible to dying. Nisha understands that and is going to look for an opportunity to jump. Now, honestly, I even thought maybe he could have jumped a little bit earlier, but he's afraid of the lift from Rubik, the song from the Naga, the duel from the Legion. So it's reasonable. His team isn't that close. So honestly, right then and there, good identification of the overall positioning. However, we're going to see another moment later, Quinn is going to show again in the bottom lane. This time his team is in position and him and Zai are going to take the confident play and jump the Legion Commander. Now, unfortunately, she's a little bit too tanky and has a four staff, so she ends up living. But I just want to show you guys how quick these pro players are. They're not perfect, right? For instance, maybe they could have killed Mag on the last mid wave if they were a little bit quicker. Let's be real, right? But at the same time, they're very, very fast at saying, oh, there's someone bottom, let's jump mid. And that's huge in pubs. Now, you can't always get your whole team on the same page, but you can initiate fights as any hero with a blink stun or just <laughs> whatever you can initiate with if you see these plays. All right, next up, next play. <laughs> I just, this for me is huge. Okay, everyone makes mistake, guys. I just want to show you briefly in this fight that he does miss a bunch of spells. He ends up clutching up and like hitting a nice ice wall later on, but like, for instance here, probably had a big opportunity to get a major tornado meteor combo. Okay, he ends up leading with sort of nothing. They get off a nice song. Now after that, he's going to end up chasing with the tornado, which he's going to throw out in a moment from now. And that hits on actually no one and then he meteors and then cold snaps the rubik and yes it's a good cold snap and it's a good deafening blast to keep the rubik in place rubik is furthest up on his team and he's a rubik so it's definitely good that he cold snaps and deafening blasts the rubik and that ends up allowing them to chase on i mean it's definitely not the perfect fight he missed two of his major spells but at the end of the day it doesn't matter when you're 6k ahead and you find a good opportunity on the rubik all right now we're up to point number nine and this is what i mentioned earlier as probably my favorite play Nisha is going to push towards the mid wave here and they're looking to invade towards the Roshan pit, maybe find a kill. What I really like is how aware he is of his positioning and what he's doing. They're going to jump onto the Lesh and okay, this isn't a big deal. They're going to save him with press the attack and they burn the Wukong's command. Great play from Gaming Gladiators actually. From there, he's going to Ghost Walk and this is what I love. He's going to Ghost Walk and actually ends up showing on the mid wave briefly. They don't jump this Lesh here because once again, he's just super aware of his teammates. Hoodwink's not here. Trian's not here, Broodmother's not here, so he doesn't go, right? Then from there, he's going to accidentally show on the mid wave. I have a feeling this wasn't intentional, but he shows on the mid wave. He realizes that and doesn't want to run into them here. He has to take the long way and be careful because good players, if they see this ghost walk, are going to put down a sentry right here and look to jump you. Invoker at the end of the day isn't that tanky. Yes, he has a BKB, but he certainly could die if he doesn't get it off, right? They could lift an RP and try to kill him. So he's going to take the long way, does end up showing with the Ghost Walk again, and so you can see he, he doesn't run into them. The average player would see their team running in here, and they would run forward to the left. And in any high MMR game, they would die right here every single time, because the enemy would see it, put down a sentry, and jump you seeing that your team is here. That's what happens in these high level games. 100%. If you make that positioning error, you die. And really, that's what makes this guy so good. 
Like, I, I know people can't see these things, but that is what it is. Like, I'm not over-exaggerating. Obviously, it's the culmination of everything, but, like, this is why this is my favorite play. Nothing ends up happening, but that could have been extremely bad. Most players, including a lot of pros, could have died and would have died there. And finally, we're going to see a beautiful game ending play from Isha. This is the last clip of the game. Just a nice little team by here. Doesn't extend on the mid wave once again, paying attention to his teammates, understanding that the Monkey King is going to push out bottom. He doesn't overforce the issue once again. From there, he sees the Legion Commander mid, sees the Magnus, and they want to collapse. They shoved out the bottom wave, and they see the Naga farming on a deep bottom jungle. They saw the Mag blink away as well, and this is just honestly kind of bad positioning from Gaming Gladiators, but a fantastic punish from Liquid. They find the Legion Commander alone on the side, they hex her up and kill her off. The hex can only be purged by press the attack, so if you hex her, she dies. From there, they kite out really, really well. And then look at this cold snap, oh my! Look at that cold snap, what a beast! So fast on the cold snap, where the skewer doesn't connect. He tried to skewer an RP, but it doesn't connect, he's so- <laughs> That is unbelievable, that's actually insane. He actually pretty cold snapped him, wild. And that allows him to sidestep it, get off the MP and Magnus dies without getting anything off. I mean, it's brutal, man. It's brutal playing into this guy. Like he's just, he's just too fast. Hex onto the Naga, I swallow to try to chase. They don't get him, so they back off. They're gonna look for Roshan, but this is about where the game ends. Gaming Gladiators pretty demoralized. They've bought back on their Legion Commander now, which uh, I don't know why he's hitting a Sentry Ward like that, but it is what it is. He gets jumped. He's going to die. And that's going to basically be the end of the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the top 10 plays that Nisha makes that makes him the goat. And I'll see you in the next one. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.